Hi guys, so today I'm going to be filming for you my tonsillectomy story. In my previous video, if you have watched that, I did say I would be making a story on this. This is going to be a long story, so make sure you've got snacks at the ready. I've got mini eggs and Percy and Penny to keep me going because I am starving right now. Anyway, so um, I've suffered from tonsillitis since I was about eight years old, I'd say. I used to get it at least four to five times a year when I was younger. Um, my sister used to get tonsillitis a lot as well. My mum did push with the doctors for us to get tonsillectomies when we were younger, but they always said we didn't have it enough. When I was a teenager, it started to get progressively worse. I used to get it anything between five to eight times a year. There was a time in my life about five years ago, I'd say when I was about 18, when I was about 18, when I thought that tons, my, my tonsillitis had gone because it is rumored or apparently it can happen that you can grow out of tonsillitis as you get older so there was one stage in my life where I had I literally hadn't got it for a year and then it came back and then I got it every single month I would be getting it every four to six weeks and I I don't like taking tablets I don't agree with them so I first had a referral from my GP when I was living at home and I um, had a tonsillectomy booked for the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. I'm the type of person where I have to know everything that's going on. I don't like not being in control of myself and I don't know, I don't know if that's something that's come from anxiety that's made me like that but whenever I do something, wherever I go, I'm a very organised person. I have to know what I'm doing, I have to have a plan, I like to know what's going on. So before I was due for my tonsillectomy, I YouTubed tonsillectomies, I YouTubed being put to sleep, um, I googled about tonsillectomies, I read all about it and I think that did put me off quite a lot. Just to let you know, I have had an anaesthetic before, I broke my arm when I was about eight, I, I actually snapped a bone so I have been under anaesthetic but that wasn't a choice of mine, I had to get it done because I'd broken my arm really badly. Um, so the day comes of the 14th of February for me to get my tonsillectomy done and my mum was meant to be coming with me and she caught the flu so she wasn't able to come with me because it was at risk of infection to me so I had to go with my dad. I'm not. My mum and dad are separated, the divorce. I had to go with my dad, I'm, I'm not as close with my dad and my dad's not as strict as my mum so um, we went to the hospital I think we had to, from what I can remember, we had to be there for about 11am and they don't let you drink or eat like from 12pm the night before from what I can remember so they literally sat me in a room with other people that were going to have a similar or same operation because it's ENT, a nose and throat. That made me so anxious. I was due to be the first one to go. Then the time came and they called me through. I had to go down to the anaesthetic room. I had to go by myself. What I experienced as I walked to that anaesthetic room was the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life and I wouldn't dream on anybody to go through what I went through. I had to go down in a lift and as I walked to the anaesthetic room, we walked down this long corridor, I looked to my left and there were doors wide open and it appeared to be the recovery room. There was a boy in there, probably about 18, 19, who was just recovering from the operation. No nurses were her around him. He'd clearly just woken up. He still had the breathing tube down his throat and blood was dripping from his mouth. I then continued to walk and to my right, the doors were wide open and they'd just finished operating on somebody. I then walked into the anaesthetic room to be sat down. By this point, my heart was racing really badly. I laid down on the bed, they put the heart monitors on and 
you could hear my heart racing and as the anaesthetic guy put the heart monitors on my chest he said have you seen your chest and when I looked down I had the biggest anxiety rash I have ever seen in my life it my my body was covered my chest my shoulders all down my back him saying that made me feel a lot worse they then started to talk about what size needle they were going to put in my hand um I saw oxygen tubes that were clearly going to go down my throat it was just the worst thing ever and the scariest part for me was being put to sleep and thinking that I'm not going to wake up they could see something was wrong they could see I wasn't happy and they said to me are you okay because I was taking my time and I said I was anxious I didn't feel I, I didn't want to go ahead with it they then offered to go get my dad and for him to call, come hold my hand while I got put to sleep my dad is the worst person in hospitals he hates them he will faint at anything so obviously he I wasn't going to go get him to do that because I was taking so long the worst thing was was that I was behind doors where I knew I was going for surgery and I, I didn't like that but it was just the thought of knowing that I'm going in there they're going to operate on me anyway because I was taking so long the surgeons and whoever were assisting him started to peep through the hole like the window in the door and they sat there they stood there staring at me that made me feel awful the surgeon then comes into the room to see what's the issue and I tell him that I'm anxious I don't think I want to get this done and he said oh I mean I can kind of sympathize with you I've been through a similar situation I mean I haven't had an operation but I've been through a skydive and that was really anxious I'm sorry a skydive this is an operation this is something that I'm not in control of this is something where I'm not choosing to get this done I have to for my health and you're telling me a skydive is something similar no that was it that tipped me over the edge I couldn't get it done so I went back home my mum was really disappointed if my mum had come with me she would have literally strapped me to that table and made sure I went to sleep because she's that type of person so I'm glad at that stage she didn't come with me the second time I went to go get my tonsillectomy done was when I was living at Leeds at the time I first went for a referral and the referral doctor gave me some tablets to be on I can't remember what they were called but he said they would shrink my tonsils they did shrink my tonsils a little bit and it did stop me getting tonsillitis for about six months that didn't work I got recurrent tonsillitis again and when I first had my tonsillitis my first tonsillitis batch after this medicine they grew back to the original size so I went back to the referral GP and they put me down for another tonsillectomy the day came for my second tonsillectomy and my mum drove up to Leeds to come with me it's about an hour drive from where I'm originally from that night I got a very sore throat and it was a throat infection it wasn't tonsillitis me and my mum rang the hospital to get advice and say we're traveling we're traveling an hour to come to you and I don't think the surgeon's gonna agree to do the surgery because I'm poorly and the nurse said no it's fine you can come so we traveled at 6 a.m that next morning to Leeds to go get my tonsillectomy we got into the room and the nurse said yeah you're gonna have to wait to see the surgeon so an hour and a so about an hour and a half goes by and the surgeon comes and he can clearly see I'm not well and he said I'm not willing to operate on you because you've got a throat infection and any illness there is a risk of one of once I've performed the operation that you could get pneumonia things could progress and get worse so I didn't get it done and then finally after two years later I went for my tonsillectomy on the 10th of April this year 
This time round, I'm living in Manchester, so I got referred to Manchester Royal Hospital. I got my friend, let's call her Lucy, from work. She is a really good friend of mine. She's very loyal and I'm very grateful for what she did for me that day because I would not have got it done without her. My mum offered to come, but because of the pressure that I've had from her for the past three years, because I've been consistently off work with tonsillitis, I forgot to mention that from the first time that I was meant to get the tonsillectomy done, I suffered with panic attacks because of the experience that I went through, and it took me about two years to stop those panic attacks. I still get anxiety to this day, and I still get rashes on my chest when I feel anxious, but it is under control. Anyway, so my friend Lucy came with me that morning to the hospital. I explained to the nurses when I went for my pre-operation the, what I felt traumatic experience I'd been through previously, and I explained that I would like my friend Lucy to come into the anaesthetic room with me to be there for me to help me feel calm and be put to sleep. Lucy was brilliant. That morning we went to the hospital. We went to the reception and she said, your friend can't come in with you, which set off my anxiety straight away, straight away, because I was still under the impression in my mind that I was not gonna get this done. So she said we'd have to wait to speak to the anaesthetic um, nurse and the surgeon to see if that would be possible. My friend Lucy, she made a full Spotify album while we were waiting to keep me calm. She did it of all my favourite songs. She did like Venga Boys, Justin Bieber, we had a bit of One Direction. It just completely put my mind at ease and it made me feel so comfortable and relaxed in a situation that I didn't want to be in. We then got progressed to the ward if they're like the day ward if you like because it is a day case with a tonsillectomy because i was due to go in in the morning the anesthetic nurse came round to us about half seven from what i can remember in the morning she asked if i was okay and that blew my mind i just burst into tears Luckily, because Lucy was there, she explained the whole situation that I'd been through previously, what I didn't want to go through, that I wanted her to be in the uh, anaesthetic room with me. The anaesthetic nurse was absolutely fantastic and she was another reason I think I got it done. I told her that I didn't like the sound of the heart monitors. I didn't like the thought of being put to sleep in an anaesthetic room where I know I was going into the next doors to be operated on she agreed for lucy to come in the room the anesthetic room with me to be put to sleep the anesthetic nurse agreed to put the cannula in my hand in my um the anesthetic nurse agreed to put the cannula in my hand in the day ward which i was really grateful for because that cut down a lot of time for me being in that room so she also put, I believe, diazepam in my um, cannula while I was waiting to go down to calm me down. She was going to give me a tablet, but she explained that if I was to have this tablet, that I would not be able to be the first one on the list, because she did agree to that as well. And I'd have to be in the afternoon because it would need time to settle in. And by that point, I didn't know whether actually I'd be more anxious because I was waiting and that actually, the um, whatever she would give me to calm my anxiety would not work. The funny thing was, is because a lot of the, the ward nurses were quite difficult about Lucy being in the room with me and saying, you're gonna have to go out, you're gonna have to speak to the anaesthetic nurse, you're gonna have to speak to the surgeon. We put on a legal document that Lucy is my sister, which I think is hilarious. And we just, we actually had so much fun being there. But this surgeon came around to see me as well to discuss the operation. And I asked her if I could see my tonsils after or if she could take a picture. So she did agree to see a pic, um, to take a picture of my tonsils once they were taken out. Oh my God, the funniest thing happened. Basically next to your bed, if you're on your own, which you're meant to be usually, there is like um, a, like, 
a drawer unit next to your bed and it's lockable so you can put your valuables in there whilst you go down to theatre. I went to put my bag and Kayla's bag in this drawer and the whole thing collapsed like literally we caused mayhem in the hospital it was hilarious they also made you put on these slipper boots usually you have to wear um like long socks to um I think it's to to help with your blood flow whilst you're in surgery but I had these slipper boot things so the time comes and I go down to surgery with Lucy and the anaesthetic nurse. She hooked me up instantly to something. I don't know what it was. It was a drip and it made me feel like I was drunk. Lucy was stood there talking about the alchemist and when we go for drinks. And then the anaesthetic nurse walks around to my back and she must have put the... Um, she must have put the anaesthetic in my back or she must, she did something behind me so I didn't see it physically going in my arm and up my body but Lucy tells me that she saw all this white stuff coming across my chest and then literally within five seconds I was out. For me to go through that, I genuinely cannot believe I did it. I am still shocked to this day and I probably will be shocked for a very long time because it is something I never thought I would get done. I woke up in the recovery room. The anaesthetic nurse apparently woke me up in surgery as well once this surgery had finished because she said she would rather wake me up in surgery to make sure I'm, I'm okay and everything being around them if needs be if something went wrong. I don't remember that at all. All I remember is waking up in the recovery room and speaking to the nurse about leads and going shopping in Leeds. They then wheeled me round to the day ward where Lucy was. I felt fine and that was probably because I was on so many meds and drugs um, that I didn't feel anything. Now I had surgery about quarter past nine and I think I came out at about 10 o'clock. I remember coming to my back to the ward at 11 a.m um and they said you had to stay in the day ward for six hours which i thought you just went and got it done and two hours later you'd be allowed out no nah. six hours six hours of watching a tv that then a free tv for a certain period of time and then it cut out at about 3 p.m and you then had to pay what i don't understand and what really frustrates me is i pay tax in this country but yet people in prison get TV, Xboxes for free and I'm in the hospital having surgery and I can't even watch TV for free. I have to pay for that. I think that is disgusting. I do not agree with that whatsoever. Anyway, it comes to five o'clock when they're meant to discharge me and I couldn't get up. I couldn't walk properly. I felt dizzy. My friend Lucy had to walk me to the toilet. She had to stay in there with me to make sure I was okay. And then, I, and then when Lucy left later, I also had to have another nurse, two nurses chaperone me to the toilet to make sure I was okay and help me walk. My boyfriend came to do the night shift at 5 p.m and we eventually left at 8 p.m that night day one and day two of recovery was an absolute breeze i could not believe it i was like all these people are saying tonsillectomies are very painful and not to get it done am i lucky because day one and two honestly you wouldn't have even thought i'd had a tonsillectomy Day three comes and it goes to hell. It was like piercing sharp pains in the back of my throat. I was waiting to take my next medication. It was so painful, I cannot describe. It wasn't just throat pain. Because your ears, your ear, nose and throat are connected, I had severe earache and still now I'm in the last I'm in the last of the third week of recovery and I still get ear pain when people talk to me and I talk and I still have throat pain. It's not nice at all but I am comfortable without the medication now. So it got to the Thursday night and I was in excruciating pain. 
so I went to the um, emergency out of hours doctors at the Manchester Royal the doctor couldn't see any infection but he was concerned it could potentially get infected and also I was um, suffering really bad earache and I had a high temperature so I was given a hell of a lot of antibiotics the Friday night comes around and I woke up at about 3am in the morning my boyfriend was out clubbing and I started to swallow quite a lot and I thought I was swallowing phlegm and then it got quite persistent and I was like this cannot be phlegm so I rushed to the bathroom open my mouth and my mouth was just filling and filling with blood I immediately panicked and burst into tears because one I was on my own and two the nurse had said in the hospital if it becomes to a point where your um, scars bleed you need to come back into A and you need to come to back to hospital straight away because you might need to go back into surgery or you might need your blood vessels cauterized they said it's not a pleasant experience so i rang my boyfriend and told him he needed to get home and i rang 999 because i was on my own when whenever there's blood i panic that i'm gonna pass out and so i rushed downstairs to the concierge and asked if i could stay with them until the ambulance came the ambulance came and we went back up to the apartment and they looked at my throat which at this point it had stopped bleeding um, they said they couldn't take me to A&E because they would do nothing there what I find disappointing is that they, the nurses told me if anything like that happens you need to be straight into A&E you need to get seen to and have it looked at because I suffer with anxiety it doesn't help that I was told to do something and then somebody else is telling me they're not going to take me to get looked at because I thought well, you know what if it gets worse I didn't dare go back to sleep that night I was terrified the second week was a lot better than the first week in terms of pain what was strange is that I would take my cocodamol um, I would take my cocodamol and then about 30 minutes later I'd arrange to eat so there was no pain. It was really strange that once I ate, it was as if I'd never taken cocodamol to get rid of the pain because it came back instantly. I didn't eat a lot that week. I lived a lot of chocolate because it melted in my mouth, although the chocolate became quite rich at the back of my throat. I did also eat a lot of mash and gravy and I would 100% recommend that if you do get a tonsillectomy mash and gravy will be your best friend my roommate also made for me Ribena ice cubes to suck on they were too too cold for my mouth but they did help the pain and I also had ice lollies um, I remember because it was Good Friday I sent my boyfriend to go get fish and chips for us because I thought I could eat it I couldn't touch it I literally ate the batter and that was it off the fish it's very hard to eat stodgy foods when you've had your tonsillectomy because like for example the chips even if you chew them right down they seem to get stuck in like the holes at the back of your mouth it was really weird one thing I did forget to mention as well is that apparently you get your tongue clamped so they they can reach the back of these throat to take the tonsils out my tongue swelled a hell of a lot and i had didn't saw down the side where my teeth were resting i also had a lot of toothache and i did think at one point i had like a tooth infection but it must just have been because of the swelling i also had swelling in my face and my lips i've only just really started to eat again you're meant to have two weeks off work and I had to go back to the doctors on Sunday to get another sick note because I was in a lot of pain to talk and I had a lot of earache. Because I'm in a telephony role, that would have been very hard for me and I would be worried that I would catch an infection or something would happen where I would then 
be off for longer because I caught something so whilst I could respond to emails and things which I'll be happy to do I just didn't want people to talk to me as like trying not to be rude as possible but it's just very it was just very painful it is still quite painful now but I my antibiotics have finally finished and I'm no longer taking cocodamol I am worried I took my last batch of antibiotics last night I am worried that I don't know it might get more painful I'm not sure so we'll see how it goes but from reading people's blogs and things about tonsillectomies I honestly thought it would be a two week recovery and that was it I'd be fine again but I do think this is a, a long stage to recovery. The other bad thing about a tonsillectomy is that you're not allowed out the house for two weeks. I did break that rule. That's maybe why I got an infection, I don't know. I went out to Tesco's one day and I went to my boyfriend's auntie's on Easter Sunday um, to celebrate Easter Sunday with them. I obviously couldn't really eat or talk but it was nice to get out of the house that's I think that's been the worst thing is actually not being able to go out of the house it's been so boring being housebound and there's only so much TV you can do I literally before I got it done I was like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna watch this I'm gonna watch that you can't because that first week all you do is sleep 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 the cocodamol sent me to sleep because i was taking eight cocodamol a day eight ibuprofen a day and two antibiotics every six hours so i was under a lot of medication and all i did was sleep usually if i fall asleep at night for example i will be up the rest of the night but the night i initially came home i fell asleep and my boyfriend woke me up on the sofa at about half 11 to go to bed I dropped off straight away. I just slept. I'd wake up in the morning, go up to watch Show Me Kyle, and I'd be asleep till dinner time. And then I'd have a sleep in the afternoon as well. So you do sleep a lot. Um, and as long as you get up and take your medication and you drink lots of water, as painful as it is, it does get better. I can't say whether it's been worth it in the long term as of yet because I'm still in very early days but I'm hoping this will be helpful for my future. I will no longer need time of work for sore throats or tonsillitis or throat infections. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. So yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye! No, that's all wrong. That is so wrong. Cut. Cut. That's a lie. I lied to you. The anaesthetic nurse put the, um, what's it called? What's that thing called when they put it in your hand? I can't remember where I was up to now. By the way, I'm wearing... The Courtney K by Kylie Jenner and I'm really not impressed with it at all. I think it's awful. It's so inconsistent. Like, the first layer was see-through. The second layer was see-through. It's really drying on your lips. I'm not a fan. But I thought I'd try it out anyway. Anyway, I think I was talking about food and what to eat. Um, What else did I eat? My boyfriend got Barbarita one day, so I got the no, what was it called, no, like the, the one with no wrap basically, it was just like a salad with the stuff on top, I couldn't eat that, it was really painful.